Recently I've been getting a few questions from a number of different people, uh, but they've been asking very similar things. And that thing essentially is, I need functional skills maths, I don't like maths, never been good at maths, I'm petrified, what should I do? And that's what I'm going to try and uh, tell you today. Okay, so the first thing that always stands out for me is that people say, I need functional skills maths. It's very rare that people say they want functional skills maths. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, often the thing that lets people down when they do maths the first time around is there's that question of, why am I doing this? I'm never going to use this maths. You know, well, what's the reason for doing it? But now you've got a purpose. You need maths, whether it's to uh, further your career, get onto a course you really want to get onto. You've got something to motivate you. So, so that, that's, that's a real positive, okay? Uh, so I've got a few things on here. I'm going to start off by looking at some questions that are things that you need to answer yourself or maybe with a bit of help, but then also some other questions that I think you might want me to try and help you answer. Okay, and hopefully this is going to cover off the, the types of uh, sort of queries that I'm getting. So first of all, what level do I need? Now, usually it's going to be level two maths that most people are going to want, whether that's to go on to uh, a university course or uh, uh, their employer needs them to do it. But what I'm saying, don't guess. Check what level you need. Okay, it's very easy to assume our functional skills goes up to level two, or I need level two, but, but do check. And also, you might find if you're applying for different courses, things like uh, nursing courses or, 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 or degree courses, that one college or university might say that you need functional skills level two, uh, but another one for a course that looks very similar, if not identical, might be asking for GCSE. Okay. Now, usually when I get people starting my courses, the first thing that one of the learners will say is, is functional skills level two equivalent to GCSE maths? And the simple answer is no. So you could argue that the level of maths required for functional skills level two is very similar to what you would uh, need to get maybe a grade three or four in a GCSE but they are not the same. So if a course needs you to do GCSE, you need to have GCSE. Functional skills level two maths is not going to, to help. Okay, so that's a good thing to start off. Make sure you know what you actually need. And if you're looking at different colleges, even if it's for the same courses, look what their individual requirements are. Uh, if it is that you need GCSE maths, then functional skills maths can still be a good stepping stone to get you there uh, and get a good qualification along the way as well. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but just make sure what you know, that you know what your end goal is and what you're really aiming for. So if you haven't done maths for a while, then you might not actually know what level you're at at the moment. So you might think, I need to do functional skills, maths, maybe you know you need to do level two, but you think, well, what's my starting point? Am I starting from entry level three? Am I starting from level one? Uh, you might not even know the different levels uh, that there are for functional skills maths. So, very briefly, there are three entry level qualifications, entry level one, entry level two, entry level three, and then you've got level one and level two, which are above the entry level qualifications. Uh, and it's difficult to know where you would be starting, but obviously that's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference as to what courses you might do, what resources you're going to need, all of those sorts of things. So how can you find out what level you're at? Well, one way you could just pick up some past papers, have a go at those, maybe try an entry level three as a starting point, see uh, how you get on with the paper, uh, and then maybe if you struggle with that, maybe try entry level two or move up to level one uh, just to get a feel for that. Alternatively, there are some websites you can try where they'll give you a little sort of test or assessment on there that you can give a go. Uh, one that I found that's quite handy, I'll put a link to it at the bottom of this video, I can't remember the name, Maths with Graham, I think it is, uh, which is quite good. You can, you can try that at different levels. 
Uh, but also, if you're looking to do functional skills, maths, then going to a college or your further education provider uh, nearby, they should be able to tell you what level you would need to start studying at. Uh, and that shouldn't cost you anything to do as well initially, uh, but you would need to do an assessment. So what that might be online, you might have to go to the centre to do it there. But it's, it's definitely worth doing that so you at least know where you're starting from. Okay. Uh, how long have I got or want to spend getting the qualification? Okay, so, so say you're doing an initial assessment and it comes out that currently you should be working towards level one. Okay. Well, if you do a course at your, your local further education college, then typically that means you spend probably a year doing level one and then another year doing level two. And so that's two years. Uh, it might be that you actually have to start off at entry level three, which could mean three years of maths uh, before you can kind of start on whatever the next step of your, uh, your educational or career is. Now, you might be thinking, I just haven't got that amount of time to spend. I, I want or I need the qualification quickly because I know exactly what I want to do and I've got everything lined up for it. So obviously you have to be realistic about uh, how long these things take. You have to put the time and effort in to get through the qualification, but you don't have to always just do the qualification in the uh, sort of one qualification per year. So if you're thinking of using your local college, and I'm going to talk about that a bit more later on, uh, then find out what they offer. They might offer some fast track courses where maybe you can do a, a course in six months instead of over a full year. Uh, with functional skills exams, they can be taken throughout the year. So you don't have to wait like for GCSE to either sit it in uh, sort of May, June time or, or November. You can take them any time. But it does depend on what your uh, education provider is offering. Now it's also worth considering that with uh, maths, uh, uh, at all levels really, but particularly at functional skills, uh, maths is generally split into three topic areas. So you've got number, which covers things like your mental arithmetic, percentages, fractions, decimals. You've then got shape and space, which is all things sort of perimeter, area, measurements. And then you've got data handling, which is all your graphs and charts and tables of data. Okay, And as adults, uh, which most people looking to do factual skills uh, will be, we tend to be better at the number topics. That's just because we sort of, those are the things that we're kind of using in everyday life. Shape and space, data handling, we're probably not doing a lot of that. So we tend to be a little bit weaker. So one thing to consider is if you're going to go to a college to get your initial assessment, then actually you can do a little bit of, don't just see it as go along and see where I am. You can actually do a bit of preparation for the assessment and you might find that that means that you come out rather than entry level three, you might come out that, that you're ready to start level one. Or alternatively, if maybe you were around level one, just a few of those uh, a little bit of revision, brushing up on things that maybe you haven't looked at for years and years, could be enough to say, well, you don't need to start at level one, but actually you can start at level two. So the initial assessment, I don't want to scare you, uh, but, but do take it seriously. Think how can I prepare for it so I can come out in, in sort of the, the best position for, for, for yourself. The final thing to say about uh, how long to spend on getting the qualification is often I'll get people who will do uh, their sort of uh, practice assessment for the first time for functional skills and they might say, wow, that, that was hard, this is functional skills, why, why is it so difficult? Uh, and functional skills isn't easy, especially level two uh, since the changes that came in in 2019. So don't underestimate functional skills. You've got to uh, give it the respect it deserves. As I said before, you've got to put the time and effort in. Okay, so don't think this is something you can just skip through. You, you, you've got to treat it seriously, uh, and then and then you will do you will do well. Whether you're trying to pass the exams in two years or two months, uh, you're not just learning the maths, but you're getting used to the style of the papers and knowing exactly what it is that the 
questions want you to say, how they want you to answer the question, what information is key, all of those sorts of things. So, so it's understanding all of that as well as, as learning the maths, which you might think, I know the maths, why do I need to go through this? Okay, so, so it's getting used to knowing how to answer these papers uh, well and efficiently so that you can, you can get through and uh, give yourself the best chance of passing. So you might have some questions of your own that you want answering. Uh, often this will be an important one, how much does it cost? Well, if you go via your uh, further education, college, often it will be free. It's likely to be based on your income, your sort of financial circumstances, uh, whether you're receiving any type of benefit, anything like that. So do look into that, but uh, there, there's a good chance that you'd be able to get onto a course and it won't cost you anything, which is obviously, it's going to help you a lot. If you do go by uh, Further Education College, uh, which, which I would recommend, uh, you're going to have to abide by their rules. So do make sure that you understand uh, how long the course is for, whether there's the option to take the exam early, what happens if you need to resit, all of those sorts of things. Uh, make sure you know exactly where you stand before you start. Now, you might find that you um, don't want to go through a college instead. You might be able to find uh, places where you can enter yourself. Uh, obviously, then you're going to have other costs involved. A lot of the uh, resources, which we're going to go on to, so a lot of the resources you might be able to get for free via a further education college, but going directly yourself, you might have to pay for or find that it's just... It's, it's just they're just in, inaccessible okay so so do think about this one uh, you might find that you want a tutor as well to help you uh, you might be on a, on a big a big course with lots of other learners um, and think actually I want I want a little bit of one-to-one -one help or something else you could use a tutor as well I'm not going to say you sh should or shouldn't uh, just be aware of the cost of that as well if you're going to get a a uh, private maths tutor to help you. It could cost you anything from £20 to £50 an hour, something like that. Uh, but if you're going with your course, then you might find that you get some one-to-one -one help there as well. And do sort of take advantage of the tutor you've got. Know what's available. Know whether you've just got your lessons, whether you're entitled to any extra time uh, with a tutor outside of class. And just use that usually. If learners are keen and they're asking useful questions and, and trying to, to, to get ahead, then the tutor should be encouraging them and helping them as much as they can as well. Okay. So I briefly mentioned resources. So some of the resources that are available are actual sort of almost, well, for, for a start, you've got your traditional textbooks. I have one here. Now, other textbooks are available. Uh, the reason I like this textbook, and I'll put a link to this one uh, at the bottom of the video as well, is that uh, often textbooks will be for different levels. So if you do an entry level three, you get an entry level three textbook. Level one, you get another le level one textbook. This one, it works topic by topic, but it goes through the levels on each topic. So it will start at entry level three and go all the way up to level two making it clear which bits are at each level, okay? And that can be really helpful, especially if you maybe you're starting at level two, but you haven't done maths for a long, long time. You might not know what you're expected to already have learned. So this will tell you, even though you're starting at level two, actually, these are the things that you would have learned at entry level three. This is what's expected of you at level one. So, uh, I, f I find that works quite nicely. So that's if you like your kind of your old style textbooks. Obviously online, there's lots of resources available as well. Unfortunately, the, the best resources often have to be paid for. Uh, unlike my YouTube channel, which is totally free. Uh, but what you'll find is if you go through your further education college, they will have access to some of these resources. So, so things like Skills Forward, which is a way of uh, tracking your progress. Uh, you have little tutorials, assessments and things all online. 
that, that you can work through uh, and say can sort of track your progress, other things like maths watch. But talk to your local colleges, find out what they use, and then you can kind of do a little bit of, of research on those as well and find out what you what you might like. Okay, so resource is really important, but note that just by using a college, you might get access to things that you otherwise wouldn't. Another place you can try for resources is the exam boards themselves. So uh, for functional skills, you can use different exam boards for the, for the exams. Uh, typically, people will be using the likes of Pearson Ed Excel, City and Guilds, maybe AQA, NCFE, and other exam boards are available. Uh, but know, know which exam boards you're going to be using. Uh, if you're going via a college, then they'll decide for you. Otherwise, if you're going sort of directly by yourself, then, then have a look and see which ones uh, you think is more suitable for you. As I say, usually Pearson and Excel or City and Guilds tend to be uh, the more popular ones. Uh, but they all have resources themselves on their websites that you can access past papers like the ones on my YouTube channel, those sorts of things. But again, you might find that there's certain content on there that's only available to tutors. So by going through a college, uh, you will get access to that information via your tutor, which you might not be able to get if you were just doing it on your own. So, how do I start? Well, let's say the first thing I do is try to answer these questions, because you need to know where you're going, you know, where you need to get to, where you're starting off, how long time, how much time you've got to get there. Okay, so all of these things. So really, that means probably talking to uh, the places where you're maybe looking to go afterwards. So if you're looking for an, another course, what their requirements are, as mentioned up here. But then also talking to your um, functional skills providers whether that's your further education college, or there could be somewhere online. Have a look around, uh, especially these days, it won't necessarily have to be just uh, colleges that are local to you. If some places are doing things all online, uh, some people are even offering exams online, so online invigilating. So you could be doing a course that's based somewhere else in the country, but doing it all online from the comfort of your own home. So, 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 so look at all those different things and, and what's available. Uh, but a lot of colleges will still be working on a sort of enrol in September with exams being taken in May, June time. Okay, so bear that in mind uh, that you don't want to kind of miss the boat. So if you have to enrol and get on a particular time of the year, then find out what those dates are now so that you're ready to, to act. But also, if you think that maybe you've missed those dates, well, contact the colleges directly. Okay, send them an email, show that you're interested. You might have missed it, but uh, they might allow people to start partway through the course. Or if they've got lots of people that are interested, they might start uh, another course. So be proactive, find out all the information you can, and then you'll be in the best position to make the decisions that uh, suit your, your circumstances and, uh, and where you need to get to. So I hope this has been helpful. Best of luck with your studies for functional skills. Uh, do like the video, give me comments, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thank you.